Hello, good morning, my friends, and welcome to Painting in Your PJs with Manette, or maybe we ought to call it Painting in Your PJs in my favorite sweatshirt, although I do have cozy pajamas on underneath. Yes, I am a silly goofball. If you're brand new here, welcome. Super excited to have you. Painting in Your PJs with Manette is all about using art as a creative process for personal growth and self-discovery. And this month, part of what we're doing, there's a lot going on on the channel this month. And I just noticed like a big pile of books spilled in the corner over there. And um, definitely I have a book problem right now and it's time for some cleanup and some giveaway of my books. Probably nobody else noticed, but yeah, I noticed my messy desk back there, but I am a creative. And this month I am sharing my love of books and art and writing and music by focusing on famous women artists and creatives. We have compiled an awesome printable of 50 famous women artists and creative. The link to download that is in the description of the video and um, encourage you to buy that. It's only five bucks. It really helps support our channel and helps us to continue to provide all this great free content. Good morning, Lisa. I know I'm I, I wouldn't say I normally feel that sort of spring cleaning urge purge, but I'm feeling it lately. And I notice when, even though I love to read, when I start to get too many books sort of piled around, um, there, there, there's a heaviness and a weight to them. And my closet feels the same way right now. So yes to spring cleaning. But today I'm super excited for our famous woman artist or creative today. Hi, Cindy. Today I am focusing on the writer, feminist, and really thought leader of her time, Virginia Woolf. And Virginia Woolf was a very interesting woman, and there's a lot we could say about her. Probably most of us haven't read much of her writing since high school or university days. Orlando, Mrs. Dalloway is her most famous piece. Um, a Room of One's Own was a famous essay that became a movie starring one of my favorite actresses, Helena Bonham Carter, many, many moons ago. But when I started kind of reading about Virginia Woolf, she was another one of these artists that had experienced a lot of turmoil in her life and sort of poured that out. Hey, people, back to you, Miss Bonnie. Um, poured that out in her writing and her exploration of themes and her themes. And she was considered one of the early feminist thinkers and writers. So her themes were about women's lives, about freedom. And she was very much an intellectual and spent a lot of time in intellectual pursuits, which was not common for a family of her time. But she came from a, a family of artists and intellectuals, lots of kids, and she had the freedom to do that, went to university as well, and really dedicated her life to living life her way. And one of the, the quotes that I found by her, and there's many of them um, that are really, really interesting, but the one that kind of struck me this morning as a fun place to start our conversation was no need to hurry, no need to sparkle, no need to be anyone but yourself. No need to hurry, no need to sparkle, no need to be anyone but yourself. And she was such an inspiring example of someone that really lived life on her own terms and um, was married but had many affairs with men and women and um, her life, her life story is just as interesting as her beautiful, beautiful writing. So when I read about feminism or feminist of these bygone years, and let me get up here real quick, the, the dates of her birth. I don't have the print out in front of me and uh, just share that with you quickly bear with me for one second 
All right, you would think they would have it right at the top. She was born in 1882 and died at the age of 59 in March of 1941. So right on the edge of World War II. So she was living in an interesting time politically and socially um, in the world. So she was British. If you don't know that, she was British. And again, just this really interesting character. So let's make some art inspired by Virginia Woolf. I have um, kind of a vague idea of where I want to go with this. I'm going to play with watercolor markers today. Good morning, Becky, if I didn't say good morning, because they're just sitting right here on my desk and I've been uh, having fun exploring them. I used them yesterday and make mornings sacred as well. But so I want to play good morning, Marion, uh, with watercolor markers. And I'm thinking maybe some Zen Tangle this morning. And um, I really love this look. Uh, many of the photographs of her were in profile. And I'm assuming that was by choice that, you know, she really liked her profile. She was quite romantic looking in her in her day, but really loved this photo. And then um, I got a new typewriter. I mean, a really old typewriter, but uh, was super excited to grab my typewriter and play a little bit this this morning with this quote, no need to hurry, no need to sparkle, no need to be anyone but oneself. And what a great message to uh, ourselves, right? As we're in those later years of our life, really trying to figure out maybe who am I where am I going? You know, what's my what's my path? She was such an inspiration for that. So we've done Georgia O'Keeffe and Nina Simone. And today we're going to have some fun with Georgia O'Keeffe. And I want to get the image down on the page as fast as possible. If I were feeling a little more patient or had a little more time, you know, I would probably attempt to draw her but you know what I'm kind of lazy and um, I want to get her on the page so I can start playing with her so I'm just going to trace the back of her here so that I can just get the shape of her down onto my page and then let's see what we can do. I've never tried to create a portrait with watercolor markers. Might be interesting. I'm thinking it's going to be a little bit abstract. And we'll see where we get to. And this is a really um, fun, quick way to just kind of get Im image on to paper. I'm going to see where the edges are. Get her kind of sort it in the in the center of the page here and I love this again this dreamy dreamy uh, portrait and color and I'm curious if I can recreate that with some watercolor but I'm also really loving the pattern of the lace in this wrap or dress that she's wearing which made me think of could I then come in and add some zentangle patterns so I've got now a ballpoint pen over the top of that graphite on the back of the page. And if like me, you're like, wow, drawing portraits is hard, especially drawing realistic portraits. And I don't need this to be realistic. I'm going to go ahead and get some of those lines of the darks and shadows down there. Anyone else a, a Virginia Woolf fan or, you know, fond memories of reading her or talking about her from university days or more recent days? I'm just going to lift that up and make sure I'm getting her face down on the page. Good morning, Janine. Welcome, welcome. And she almost wore, always had her hair in a bun somewhere as well. So Janine, yes, a fan of Virginia Woolf. And I'm sure that many men of the time and thinkers were, were um, critical of her and 
you know, her what would have been considered very, very radical ideas at the time. You can just see that little bit of her eye. I also really liked that this photograph was um, very stark with darks and lights, which makes the, the painting process, you know, uh, quite a bit easier. And there we have a very quick and simple outline of our portrait of Georgia O'Keeffe here on the page. And I've got some water. And I'm going to grab a few different sizes of paint brushes to play with. Not sure what we're going to need. And I'm looking, realizing that I did not do um, her hairline here. So let's just come in and get the rest of her hairline down on the page and then her hair kind of comes over her ear. So we're really just sort of seeing the, the bottom right of that ear there. And this is again uh, the shadow under her chin and at the top of her neck. But she, she there's a lot of light on her. She's very sort of um, brightly lit, right? When we look at this from a, a creative perspective, the light is on her and notice the, the dark shadows and the moodiness around her would have been common to the photographs of the, the time. And for Thursday, before I forget, we're going to do Audre Lorde, who is uh, an amazing poet. And so we're going to take a poetry different approach on Thursday with Audre Lorde and I'm almost feeling like I'm trying to decide if I want to start with color or if I want to just get some nice black graphic going. I almost feel like I could add have a lot of fun with Zentangle here but first I feel like maybe I want to get some color down. I'm definitely going to want to have some color in the background and I'm curious about colors and flesh colors and I have a variety of like watercolor crayons and watercolor markers to play with. So I'm just going to have some fun um, on my title page. It's Virginia Wolf, but you're talking about Georgia O'Keeffe. On the description of the video, Janine, was there um, an error? So I thought I had uh, put all the new information in there. I can go and correct that after. Thank you. Um, a bit intimidated by her. Yeah, she was a very erudite, very academic, right? You know, a little challenging to read. You have a lot of her books, Cindy, but haven't read them yet. And um, Marion, when you say a fan of Virginia and all these women, um, women were covering women from the, from the same uh, period of time. So let's see. And you notice I always leave this page blank for notes and for um, also for swatching colors. That's actually a pretty good color there. And then what happens if we sort of pull that out? We get that a little bit soft, thinking this one might be good for shadows unless it's a little note that one's way too green. So I'm just going to play with color here for a minute. That one might work. I'm thinking this one for her hair. And in the picture, this is a picture of her maybe a little la later in life. There's a lot of highlights in the hair and um, yet no wrinkles. So I'm assuming. Um, Maybe that's gray hair and maybe it's just highlights from the way the photograph was taken. But I do like that variation in color in that photograph. And I'm just, uh, you know, I'm restricted here by the, the colors that I've chosen. And again, that's, that was that one, different green one. 
you know, it's a, it's a, um, a constraint of my own choosing. And so I'm just present to that. And maybe we're going to want just a little touch of this is a nice pale pink. So I'm thinking, you know, if we've got a little bit of these maybe blending together. All right, so I'm feeling a little, yeah, awesome. Thanks, Marion. Me too. So many good ones. Boy, it was hard to choose. So I'm going to go ahead and just start to get some color down in here. Like I said, I've never done a, a portrait with watercolor markers before. So we're going to see how we're going to do. It's all just a big experiment. And when, you know, I look at this, there's just maybe a little bit of shadow, but this part of her face is very, very light. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's just see what happens when we start to come in here and move that color around on the page. I don't need all of the lines to disappear. And if you don't have watercolor markers, you could definitely do this process with uh, watercolor pencils or with actual watercolors. And I'm going to get some natural variation in the, the tone and shading here just by how much water I add and where I add the water. So a little less water in some places will help to keep some of those shadows in. I'm also being mindful of how much water I'm using so I don't get a ton of bleed around her onto the rest of the page here. I'm going to go right over her eye. And this is the, the lightest part of her face all in here. Already liking the way that it's look and the the fa the way her face is coming together. It may not be the the perfect color, but it looks like a face, and I'm appreciating that. And so wherever that water pools and you've got those hard lines in your watercolor, you can always just come back with you know a lightly damp brush and continue to smooth out that color there. All right, so I feel like I want to maybe just add a tiny little bit of pink here, maybe a little pink in her lips, although her lips are probably naturally darker than that. I will darken them up, but just start to bring a little bit of highlights in here. Let those colors start to mix together. Again, keeping the, the color very subtle. This is um, a watercolor crayon, not the watercolor marker and I'm just curious what can we do with that little bit of that crayon. I'm going to bring some of the darks back into her ear there. Again just amazing uh, the tiny little bits of color with the, the watercolor. And so what I'm noticing here is that watercolor crayon has a lot more pigment. Really going to be able to sort of, you know, move that around a bit.
and I can leave some of that there as well. So there's definitely a little bit of that dark on her chin. I switch to a much tinier brush. That's one of the things I'm learning to get better at with these processes is to switch my brushes. I often get lazy and get really caught up in just one brush and forget to change my brush. And I think it's important to remember to change out our brushes. We end up having a lot more control. One nice thing about these crayons is we can take that color right off the crayon and then you end up with a lot more control. Just bring a little of that shadow down around. I notice I've got a little bit of extra white highlight in here, so I'm going to come back in with this one. When I'm working with the watercolor markers, one of the things I noticed was that the uh, fine tip end is harder to get rid of the lines, takes a lot more water, so I find myself using the bigger end much more than the the smaller end and her eyes at least in the photograph here are very dark it's hard to know um, what color her eyes were i could probably google that and find out so i'm gonna come in maybe with this extra extra dark brown That's almost black. Probably a little darker than I wanted, but we're going to go with it. I'm also noticing that this is, you know, spreading a little bit with the um, water, the watercolor paper still being a little bit wet. And because that came out so black, I'm probably going to get some of this black into her hair to just make sure we're getting that color in some of the different places. I always like that sort of more outline-y look anyway. little more sketchy and there we have a very very simple simple face of Virginia Woolf. Again I'm going for a likeness not an exact replica and so for her hair it's so funny that it says brown and it looks really um, ended up looking green on the screen here. She's got all these beautiful waves in her hair. Very high forehead, very long nose. And even just uh, going back and doing, you know, a little bit of research about her life and who she was. I mean, it's been a long time since I read any uh, Virginia Woolf. It definitely inspired me to want to go back and read some of those old, you know, older pieces of classic literature. All right, just getting some color down on the page. I don't know who Kia is, or Key, or I see Bonnie that you and Lisa said same, so 
Not sure who or what you're referring to there. All right, I want this all to get softened up, but those lines don't need to completely disappear. Want to keep some of the, the variation and texture. And as this dries, then I'll be able to come back in and add even more texture. Color pencil would be a fun um, addition to this. I'm being mindful here of not having the watercolor marker spread too much into her face. Hi, Sing. Good morning, good morning, or afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. Oh, that's hilarious, Bonnie. Thank you, Lisa. She's coming together. And I like it when they come together a little more quickly. And sometimes it's the simplicity of supplies. All right, so definitely want to get some more of our darks back down in the bottom over here and the underneath the, the bun, you can see there's a lot of dark. Huh, I feel ya, Yvonne. Today was definitely better than yesterday with the time change, but definitely hard to get used to. And good morning, glad you're here. Also noticing when the um, paper starts to feel to uh, starts to get really wet and I can see you know it's getting a little bit fuzzy here so just being mindful of that as well. Come back in here along this white line. And we've got how her hair is kind of you know growing. We don't want to lose kind of the, the definition of the ear there either. The nice thing about watercolors is that we can have that sort of more sketchy look around the edges, but we can also really um, keep that loose watercolor look and I love kind of that combination of the sketchy and the watercolor. Good morning Judy, thank you my friend. I love the little bits of light that stayed in there and I may even come back over the top of this all with some white Posca to try to just get some of those highlights in there. So I just want to bring back some of that texture. Hair is one of those things for me that's always fun to draw. And down here on the underneath the, you know, edge here, there's not as much detail, mostly because the light is shining up here. But here there's a lot less detail and a lot just darker light. And I'm again, I'm using very small amounts of water to start. You can always add more water, but you can't really take water away. And I love along the edges here, she's just got some, you know, wisps as happens, right? And so we can kind of show a little bit of the wispiness of her hair just with the edge of those markers. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and it's um, it's interesting lace as well, right? Because at the the time, it's hard to know if this would have been handmade, which would have been an amazing amount of work. 
and uh, she was very much, her family was very much middle class. They were not upper class. And, uh, you know, so it's not, um, so it, it just continues to make me curious and what, you know, was the, the middle class like at that time. Okay, so really love where this is going. Definitely wanting to bring some color into the background. And probably uh, some blue. And then again, feeling like this all just wants to be a lovely Zentangle pattern of some kind. Um, maybe. I'm just kind of looking at her thinking. So I'm going to do this background first. And I'm thinking I have these. These came from some workshop or another along the way. And they're called, because um, I know you'll ask, they're uh, Marabu, M-A-R-A-B-U, art crayon. They're a watercolor crayon. And they're super creamy. Let's see what they do when we add water. And it's funny, Mary and I was at um, a beautiful little store in an artsy area of Denver, and I bought some lace. And I have inherited lace and tatting um, from, you know, my, in particular, my stepdad's grandmother was a prolific tatter and crochet, crocheter of lace, you know, the, the house covered everywhere in doilies and we still have some of that beautiful handiwork and I admire that now. And I was all, I never wanted to wear lace or pink or girly stuff. So I wonder what her, she was a feminist and she was very feminine, right? She was very feminine. Not that those two things don't coexist, but always worth exploring. So I'm using the crayon from the crayon with the water here so that I have a little more control over the color when I get up around the face. I don't want it to bleed up into the face. When I was working on my doctorate, especially in the early 90s and reading so many of these feminists going back, you know, in my own research and work. And in some ways, I know that still affects me. And in some ways, I feel removed and curious about what feminism means to me today. If you ask me what I say, I'm a feminist. Yes, I would. But what, oops, we're getting some sprinkles there. What does that mean in our world today? Does anybody have thoughts on feminism today? In some ways, it feels like we're taking some steps backwards. And one of the things Virginia Woolf was known for was a lot of writing and uh, speaking out about women's equality, equal pay, the right to vote. She was very vocal about women's roles in society and what needed to change. She spoke out strongly against war and men's need to go to war. All just very common themes in her essays. And that's why I love projects like this that not only teach me about art, but also 
make me look at my own thinking when I think about her life and times and what mattered to her and what she was writing about and how is it still relevant and uh, I was listening to this great podcast this week I'm a huge fan of uh, a podcaster named Tim Ferriss and he was interviewing this guy named Cal Newport and Cal Newport wrote one of my favorite books a book called Deep Work and he has a new book out called Slow Productivity which I can't wait to read but at one point they're, they talk a lot about our creative work in this podcast and um, at one point Tim Ferriss talks about how he chooses his creative projects um, and he said I choose projects that are going to build skills and build relationships and I thought that was such an interesting perspective now he's a very public persona and he's a very um, his creative projects are podcasting and video and writing books he what kind of rocketed him to fame was a book called the four hour work week yeah that's such a, a great perspective our personal definitions are influenced by how hard we and those around us need to fight for our place in the moment well said Marion So I'm definitely wanting to create that kind of, you know, this part is a little darker. I might even need to come in with a little bit different color blue down here at the bottom. And I'm feeling lazy and I'm wondering if we can just get more color not lazy I'm feeling uh, impatient to move that color around a little bit more get that wet crayon directly in there growing up in a Catholic family in South Texas you know I didn't know what feminism was. It wasn't anything that was ever discussed or talked about. But my mom was certainly a model of a woman who worked and lived her life and often followed her own path in the best ways. So she modeled that, whether she knew that or not. So notice how putting that crayon directly on the page, there's a lot more pigment. It's a little harder to move around. So now I'm getting that, you know, little extra dark um, up at the top up there. Get a little bit bigger brush in here and see if we can move that color. Once this color is down, it tends to stay put. So poured a lot of water on there. And it's not going to let me soften up that hard line. So once it's dry, I'll just come back in with some white over the, the top of it all to soften up that hard blue line around her head. Not all experiments work. And that's why I consider everything I do on this channel really to be an experiment in playful approach. All right, so I'm going to step away from that background before I make an even bigger mess. And um, 
get some color down on her robes and again there's something about I have no idea what color this is but it feels like pinky red with that you know pretty lace overlay I'm gonna let it be very abstract the the color on the page and let's see what we got here mm, I kind of like that corally color I can tell this is going to be too Barbie bubblegum pink not what I'm going for could even be nope it's definitely going to be this color And I'm really happy with how this is turning out. I could see myself doing more portraits using these watercolor markers. It actually ended up being, you know, pretty simple. Again, I'm not trying to capture uh, detail here of her robes because I feel like I want to come and draw that in and I'm probably going to have to wait for this to get super super dry hi buddy you want to come say hi Diego decided he needed to come by and say hello. Hi, buddy. I know. And again, just, you know, being mindful of those edges to blend the edges and not have a lot of hard edges in our color. It's interesting, I'm looking at um, sort of that the abstractness of her wrap here and one of my favorite artists from the southwest is R.C. Gorman and he drew all of these amazing Native American women and their, their clothes always had this kind of abstract flowy look and I'm thinking I may not do uh anything to her that she may just stay this way again except you know definitely wanting to fix that up a little bit and maybe just a few little of the folds just kind of looking again at the the pattern so we get that sense of you know she's wrapped up here And there's something about this that somehow feels nostalgic or like she's looking out into the world. Um, Diego's chasing my paintbrush, silly boy. He's so helpful because I'm talking with my paintbrush. Yes, he's being very helpful. My big boy. Silly cat. We needed a cat interlude there for the moment. All right, so it feels like I'm almost at a place where I need to come back and just really let this get super dry and uh, not mess with it too much. See if I can soften up that line right there. The only thing I want to do is figure out if I can soften that line around her head there. And I think there is one of those crayons in white. There is... And what happens if we just come in and soften that up? These were uh, a kid's watercolor crayon 
that I bought at one of my favorite paper stores up in Estes Park, Colorado. And I have really loved them. They're kind of like a gelato. They're, they're super, super creamy, but much less pricey than a gelato. Okay, that makes me happy. So to just smooth all of that out a little bit. And then maybe I'm going to take just a wee bit of that white and add in here as well. Lighten that up in a few spaces and I feel like if I don't stop I'm going to end up messing it up. I also have a hard line in there that I'm not loving. If we can smooth that up a little bit and get my dirty painty fingers in it. So watercolor paper definitely can get to a point where um, it starts to pill and I have a tendency to want to work the watercolor paper um, or the watercolor paint and with a lot of scrubbing like I do with acrylics and then I am forever reminded that you know, this is not acrylics and the paper when it gets wet, even though this is a very nice watercolor paper, does tend to pill. So being just, you know, kind of mindful of that as well. And I'm wondering if I just come in with a little graphite in here, if we can maybe just also soften up that inside of that ear. And don't be afraid to kind of mix your materials. I can see where some of that uh, color has maybe spread where I don't want it there. And so let's see if we can come back in with a tiny little bit of that darker color there on her lips. That's better. All right, she's feeling pretty close to done and I'm not feeling like I want to do anything else to her. And I do want to get these words onto the page. I had been looking for an old typewriter for a while and uh, a couple of weeks ago found one on Facebook marketplace and we had found like a really beautiful one that was like this gorgeous color of green but the the font on it was cursive and I wanted something that was a little more classic typewriter font and I haven't played with it too much yet too much yet so I'm going to get this quote on there and this is what I love about approaching art intuitively is that I had an idea where I was going and then midstream the idea changed and to really give ourselves permission to trust the flow and not get married to the image that's in our head. When we get married to the image that is in our head, we often get very frustrated. This is true in art as much as it is true in life. And so the more that we can practice non-attachment from outcomes, then the happier we're going to be with the outcome, right? The happier we're going to be with the outcome. All right, so I'm going to move those up just a little bit. And then down here, I want to make sure um, that we get... I'm trying on each of the pages to come in and put the name of the woman and her birth date so that by the time I have filled this journal with these women that I will 
have this lovely sort of retrospective that I can look back on. I just realized she was 49 when she died and I mean 59 and I'm 59 this year. Just interesting to contemplate. Um, and she actually took her own life. Yes, um, uh, I don't need the sound, I, you know, at all. It's quite loud, but I think that's so clever. And the feel of it is uh, very interesting. And you have to punch the keys really hard at this point to get them... Um, um, to actually type. So it's a lot of work to to type on it. So uh, I think about, you know, when I've seen old movies or photos and of uh, secretary pools, right, where everyone's typing on typing machines and just the the loudness of it. This is a, a kid's glue stick, a washable school glue stick. And uh, it looks purple, but it definitely will dry clear. The other thing I love about studying these women that it does make me think about my own story, my own beliefs, my own thoughts, my own commitment to creativity. So she was definitely one of those women who marched to the beat of her own life's path and life purpose and um, I'm sure it was not an easy path to choose, but she chose it with uh, a lot of strength and commitment. And she was a prolific artist and creative. And so I think it's, uh, you know, it teaches me a lot about the creative process and about that commitment to our journey and to our voice and to our opinions. Bonnie, my husband, for Christmas a couple of years ago, gave me two mugs. One says paint water, one says not paint water. And I love one and I love them. Um, it helps me remember also making sure they, that I have a plastic jar for water that looks nothing like my coffee cup really helps as well. But oh yes, I am certainly guilty of dipping my paintbrush into my water jug for sure and I'm keeping the original image so she's gonna get pasted into here because I like to see and remember my own process and treat this almost kind of scrapbooky style right so that I can remember where I started and where I was going but uh, today we celebrate the amazing life story and memory of Virginia Woolf. Have a beautiful rest of your day, everybody. Great to be with you as always. And thank you, Carol. Um, glad that you're here. Whenever you get here is always perfect. Thanks, my friend. I will be back on Thursday with a poem and portrait from the American writer Audre Lorde. Great to see you guys. Bye, everybody.